The death toll inside Mississippi prisons is now up to 26 since the end of December. Two inmates died in just the last week. The most recent death, 80-year-old David Parvin. He died at the Central Mississippi Correctional Facility in Rankin County on Monday. The former Mississippi State University professor was convicted of murder homicide in Monroe County, with one conviction overturned on appeal before the Mississippi State Supreme Court. He was tried, found guilty again, and sentenced to life in March of 2014. Parvin was convicted of killing his wife back in 2007. Saturday, MDOC reported that 77-year-old Willie C. Booker died at the Badness Memorial Hospital in Oxford. He was serving life at the state penitentiary in Parchman for the 1997 murder of James Avant in Calhoun County. Prosecutors said Booker and Avant were arguing, and when Avant turned around and tried to walk away, Booker pulled out a knife and stabbed him. MDOC officials do not suspect foul play in either death, and like all of the other inmate deaths, the state will conduct an autopsy to determine the official cause of death. But we'll never know what life in lockup was like for those 26 inmates. But one former state inmate gives us a glimpse into our prisons. Last week, Stephen Austin talked about the horrible living conditions at Parchman and the other two state facilities. Tonight, he talks about what he thinks are the bigger problems plaguing our prisons. I want to say the gangs don't run the place, but they do. In the last few months, growing tension between rival gangs, the vice lords, and the gangster disciples has led to fires, fights, and fatalities inside Mississippi prisons. I think there are people for whom gangs um, become a necessity in order to survive in a difficult situation. And I think there are people who weren't in gangs before they went in, and they're not in gangs after they get out, but they use it as a means of protection. In Leetsville, Mississippi, you pretty much had to sleep with your tennis shoes on every night because there was something going on down there every night. And on one of those nights, former state inmate Stephen Austin said he saw the worst in mankind. It was like on a Friday, Saturday night. You could kind of sort of feel the tension there with the inmates. Austin said he watched a man die at the hands of gang members, even testifying in federal court. And he says it wasn't the first time he saw someone die. Just two people actually died while I was down there. One was stomped to death because he was trying to steal from somebody else. And then another one was just gang related. Austin adds that affiliated gang members are the ones with cell phones. I've been shocked by those videos. They still trouble me, even though I've been in, in uh, the facility quite a bit. But, but it's real. I don't have any reason to doubt the veracity of the pictures and videos that I have seen. Recently, cell phone video and photos of the conditions inside of Parchman surfaced online, allegedly shot and posted by the prisoners inside. Austin said contraband like a cell phone is easy to get your hands on. You can have your family to meet one of the guards or either your family can send one of the guards a green dot card, two, three hundred dollars, they'll take a cell phone in for you. And there you have it. In 2018, the Mississippi Department of Corrections Zero Tolerance Initiative to Reduce Contraband resulted in the seizure of 11,863 cell phones from more than 30 facilities in the state. Cliff Johnson, the director of the MacArthur Justice Center at the University of Mississippi, said that's a result of paying the guards pennies, $24,500 a year. Many of our guards, as a result of kind of financial pressure, and pressure from within the facility have um, have given in to the pressure to participate in the trafficking of contraband in the in the prisons. You can get more drugs down there than you can on the street. I mean, it's just so drug infested. And they talk about rehabilitation. I just I get upset just thinking about it. I really do. And from time to time, Austin says he still gets upset. He says he talks to a therapist to help him cope with what he's seen and what he's been through. Now he's working to get back on his feet because he says the consequences could be fatal. I've tried and I'm still trying to straighten my life up since I've been out. And I hope and pray that I never have to go back. I really do. Because I don't think I could ever make it back down there again. 
In response to the crisis at Parchment, Governor Tate Reeves announced back on January 27th that they would begin shutting down Unit 29. Now, I reached out to the Mississippi Department of Corrections to find out where they are in that process, but so far, no response. So I checked back in with Cliff Johnson at the MacArthur Justice Center, and he says that when Governor Reeves made that announcement, there were about 1,200 inmates in Unit 29. As of today, Johnson says that number is now down to 327. So that means that three out of four inmates have been transferred to different locations over the last 44 days. I also reached out to MDOC for an updated number of guards currently employed by their department. Also, no response. We'll keep you updated on when or if we hear anything.